All right, so we're at 14.3 amps right there, and I've got it set at max so it'll record the peak whenever I turn on the air conditioning unit and it gets a surge. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we're going to do some uh, testing of the 400D Miller welder using it as a backup generator for my house and my shop in this video. And uh, so I'm in the house here. This is the uh, control to my air condition right here and we're going to check that out in a minute but I want to do this while the electricity is on and it's not an emergency so that I know what to expect when it is an emergency and I need it um, I've been without power for two whole days before uh, we had a big thunderstorm come through it was a tornado and it tore out a bunch of power around me I didn't uh, get any damage at my place but everything around was destroyed and it took them two days to get to fixing my power so I was without electricity for 50 something hours and uh, so a lot of my stuff in my refrigerator burned because I did not bother uh, running the uh, 300D the whole time it would run the refrigerator and the house but it would not run the um, AC and all that so I just didn't really even bother with it um, anyway so what we're doing is we're going to be testing that out to see if the Miller 400D We'll run the AC and we're going to be doing some uh, testing with a clamp meter, find out what our amperages are. The uh, 300D is only rated at 8,000 amps or 8,000 watts continuous, 9,000 watts peak. The 400D is rated at 12,000 watts continuous and 15,000 watts peak. Um, so that's the measurements or that's the information I've got on the machines. So anyway, we're going to go back here in the breaker panel show you how I got this set up and then we're going to go outside and we're going to uh, set the clamp meter up so that it come on and get peak amp readings when this compressor on this uh, AC unit tries to start and then we'll come back in the house and uh, get everything and make sure everything's working all right guys so this is the breaker panel inside of my house I've got this off so that I can do some testing with the clamp meter find out what my amperages is and um, this feeds the power comes in from the utility company in the bottom of the box here and this uh, big breaker here it's in the off position I got it right in there with a paint pen um, that way it's easier to see um, my shop feeds off of this 100 amp out there I've got the, the welder hooked up in the shop right now um, the way I'm doing this for testing purposes uh, I don't want to move it all outside and all that but uh, so I've got it in the shop and I'm back feeding it through my shop in here make sure that that breaker is off if you do this but I don't recommend doing it this way but we're doing some testing so that's how we're doing it anyway uh, this powers a shop out there um, which right now the generators in the shop so this is actually feeding the house going through here and feeding right there and I've got it set at max so it'll record the peak whenever I turn on the air conditioning unit and it gets a surge. I'll try to set you guys up here somewhere. Well it just kicked itself off. that was that come on. That only surged to 23. Should be more if that was the air condition. That was not the air condition that surged. I'm not sure what that was that kicked on.
capacity that it takes to start a four ton AC unit. But she is running. Fully 29 amps. As you can see, she's running, compressor's on. Um, it would probably help this unit out, help the generator too if I had a hard start kit installed. But this is a four ton AC unit. It does not have a hard start kit installed. It's a standard uh, four ton AC. And if you look down here, the uh, lock rotor amps right here is 109. So uh, we measured 79 amps at startup, a surge, and that is, you know, with the shop lights on, the house lights on, and probably the refrigerator's running, if I had to guess, probably what that was that kicked on a while ago, um, that we've seen that little surge, the 23 amp or whatever surge, it's probably the refrigerator kicking on. So anyway, I can run the AC or heat um, as long as it does not go into backup heat. Um, the deal is with the backup heat is I have a emergency backup inside the uh, furnace in there and it's electric heating element like in a dryer or something basically. Um, it's a curly spring type thing and I think that is an eight or nine and maybe a nine kilowatt element. So there's no way that you can power that along with the AC unit because that would take about 70 amps to do that, um, to power both of those, just, just the heat unit when it calls for backup heat is about 70 amps, because this is on at the same time. You can turn this off and just use emergency heat only, which is your backup heat, um, but that's still 40 something amps on both legs of the 220. That does not leave a whole lot to uh, run the rest of the house with. It only leaves you another 10 amps per leg but you don't have the compressor start current that you do with this. So I might could do that. I don't know, we'll test it out and see. Um, I can turn this off and we'll kick the backup heat only on and we'll see what happens. 15 and a half on that leg basically. So I'm getting 10 more amps on this leg and that is because the shop lights here. There's a four 400 watt metal halide shop lights that's they're 110 and they're on let's see which breaker they're on this one or this one i don't remember that one right there see they're pulling right at 12 amps just the shop lights um, so that's why we have more on one leg than the other it's unbalanced so this is our highest pulling leg all right guys it is an auto heat right now so it is uh trying to warm up the way i'm way it's set anyway we want to go in we'll turn the system to off and allow it to shut down and then we'll swap it over to emergency heat and it should kick on the emergency heat coil in here that I was telling you about. It's like a nine kilowatt element. And uh, we'll see what happens, what kind of load that's gonna put on the generator. So this is what we're pulling right now. That's full load on that generator. It's rated at uh, 50 amps continuous. We're pulling 53 on that leg right there. load because of the uh, shop lights being on you can tell that generators under full load over there Okay, 
guys, this is in the house, and this is my other clamp meter. I just want to show you what that uh, unit in there is pulling. This is the furnace, or electric furnace in backup heat mode. And you can see 39 amps right there, both legs. So you can figure that out and do the wattage on that. But that's what we're pulling. This is the legs off the shop, coming in and feeding this. 41 and a half on that one. And get my meter in there. Forty-one and a half on that one. Plus the shop lights are on. That's where the extra 10 amps are coming in. Is in the shop or 12 amps or whatever it is in the shop. With the shop lights being on. But that's running the uh, the furnace. So I'm a little bit surprised by that. All right, guys. So I just turned the emergency heat off, let it shut down. Now I want to test one more thing that I'm pretty sure is going to overload this um, because I know I've checked it before and. Um, like it pulls like 70 amps continuous um, if you turn on this in heat mode and you have the heat pump running along with the uh, the backup heat it pulls about 70 amps with the shop lights on the stuff off of the the uh, house mains that feed the house so I'm pretty sure we're gonna overload the generator doing this but I just want to see what she'll do Right, guys I got you set up here I'm fixing to go in the house I'm gonna turn on the heat pump with the backup heat at the same time and uh, don't be surprised that the lights go out trip the breaker here in just a minute yeah, that's over that's over what it's rated for by a pretty good margin you've seen it spike to 87 
right guys we got the uh, generator out there off reconnect main power and uh, it'll take the shop lights a minute to come back on under metal halide metal metal halide can't talk today all right guys we got the generator shut down welder shut down um, back on grid power and uh, everything's lovely um, I'm pretty impressed with the power that thing put out um, on generator that's way more than it's rated for it's rated for 12 continuous and 15 peak and as you see we tested that was over 14,000 watts continuous for about 30 seconds before it tripped the breaker on the welder to protect it and um, when it spiked to that 87 if you say the other leg was 77 divide that add it and divide it by two to get an average across each leg of around 80 82 amps on the uh, spike when the compressor kicked in that's over 19,000 500 watts which would be 19 five uh, or 19 and a half kilowatts so uh, that's well over you know rating and that's one thing about when you have a uh, industrial setup generator um, they'll oftentimes put out more than what they're rated for versus you got one of those uh, cheapo generators throwaway generators um, do good to make the power that they claim um, anyway because they inflate the ratings and they also the biggest issue with those small generators is the fuel tank on them well, first of all they use a lot of gas but the fuel tank on them is basically rated to run eight hours at half a load that's not very much so if it's full load on there you're going to be putting fuel in a generator of four to five hours um, in most cases um, this generator here, welder generator, has got a 25 gallon fuel tank on it, so it should run over 20 hours, um, maybe 25, 24 hours before, depending on how it's loaded. Now, if it's loaded heavily, it's not going to run that long, but a light load, it should run 20 hours, I would think, before I had to put fuel in it. Um, now, this is the, I think 2014 was the last year. This is 2013 Miller 400D and they are the same size as the 500 machines. The, uh, the newer 400s are not this big. They're called a 400 Pro, and they have a different generator and a different motor. They're not this big. They're made smaller to be uh, put on the back of a truck, and they're, they're cheaper, and they're smaller, and more set up for a truck now than what these were. These frame-wise, uh, frame size are the same as the 500s um, in physical size, fuel tank capacity. The new 400s has, I think, a 10 or maybe 12 gallon tank. The 400 Pros do. And like I say, this machine is smaller to fit on the back of a, or in the back of a pickup or on the back of a flatbed, whereas these machines here are huge um, for that application. But they work great for what I wanted them for, which was be able to drag around and have plenty of power and uh, weld and that sort of stuff. So that's why I got them. And um, they made these with and without the three phase power also. And I'll show you that. So basically, what I'm calling three phase power is this right here. This actually does have three phase power. This is just single phase power that comes out of this plug. This is your 50 amp breaker for it. This right here is a cord strain relief. And if you pull this panel out right here, you actually get three phase power in here. There's three legs right here that you tie into and then you put your ground on. Um, I've checked it with a meter and um, I think you're the 125, 125 and 250 or somewhere thereabouts. It's actually three phase power in there. And if you don't get the three phase power option on these, all you get is a four kilowatt generator over here this is what comes standard so that's why i bought these machines here is i wanted three phase power and they had to have the cv wire setting right here for your wire feeder to be able to run the cv feeder like i use right here so anyway so far i'm pretty happy with uh this one here and uh still trying to figure out what to do with this one over here uh that i got to apart that the uh, circuit board is bad on. So i got to figure out what's up with that, uh, if I'm going to get one or, or what I'm going to do with that. So this is my Miller 300D 
And as I say, it's only eight kilowatt continuous and it will not even come close to starting that AC unit. Um, and this 400D does it seemingly effortless. So I don't think I'm gonna have any problems if uh, the lights go out and uh, I've got the air condition on and I take a shower and the hot water heater comes on, I think it'll still be okay. And if not, it'll trip the breaker and I'll have to start over. But uh, from the testing I just done, I am really surprised that it, it uh, kicked that, you know, even for 30 seconds. I knew it was gonna throw the breaker, throw something or other. Um, that is a lot because I've tested it, uh, you know, on grid power at 70 amps on both legs. Um, coming through the house meter, had the shop lights on and the uh, lights in the house on. I think the refrigerator was running and then I kicked the, uh, the furnace on and the heat pump and it kicks in the backup heat and I measured 70 amps on across both legs and um, that was what I had uh, running on here. We're measuring about 65 so something may not have been on but anyway that's a lot for that generator to run even for 30 seconds. So pretty impressed with it. Um, I think it's going to do fine for what I'm doing and uh, I hope it'll work out good for me. That's one of the things about the gas generators I'll go back to is you can't keep enough gas on hand. Um, with these holding 25 gallons and I have a transfer tank in the back of my truck, a 50 gallon transfer tank, um, I could run for three days straight just one machine and then probably swap to the other machine when I get it fixed and that will give me four days straight of running before I had to go get fuel and then I also keep some other fuel around here there in Yonner. So um, I'd have enough fuel to run for four plus days, um, 24 hours a day. Um, if you got a gas generator this big, you'd have to go with like one of those Generac 15 kilowatt or 17 kilowatt, whatever they are, to get something this capable. And those things have like a 16 gallon fuel tank and they are, I think that's supposed to run like eight hours at half a load or something. Man, you'd have to have gas and 55 gallon drums and the, the problem with gas is you can't store it and without it going bad and you know in a short period of time and it's a safety concern having that much gas around um, so that's the downside to a gas generator they're they're more for uh, if you need power for a short period of time or if you live by a gas station that you know it's not an issue for you to continually to go get gas and pour it in there in cans I suppose, but um, if the gas station doesn't have power and you have to drive 20 or 30 miles because you know a tornado came through or, or whatever and wiped out the whole town's power, then uh, a gas generator is not gonna be for you or if hurricane come through, same deal. It's gonna be hard to keep gas around. And uh, so diesel is a little easier to keep around and whatnot. And so that's why that I like the diesel stuff. Anyway, I'm trying to provide you guys with as many uh, specifics as possible. I know a lot of people like the technical stuff. I want to know, you know, on anything they work on the torque specs, the amps, the watts, whatever it is you're working on. A lot of people, uh, you know, kind of nerdy like that and want to know all the specs. So I'm trying to provide as much information as I can think of in the video and what we're working on. Um, so anyway, I hope this helps somebody out. If you're looking for a generator to power your house, or whatever. Um, these are 1800 RPM units. Uh, I don't think I mentioned that in the video. And they are superior versus a 3600 RPM unit. Uh, this little welder here, this 300D, is a Kubota engine in it. It is a 3600. It actually says 3750 on there, but I think that is at no load. Um, it's at 3600 under load. Let's see where it says that at. I don't know. It says it somewhere on here. Right here, maximum RPM 3750. And uh, this thing screams. And uh, so anyway, that's what you're gonna get with a gas generator also, is you're gonna get a 3600 RPM generator. They do not last as long and they're loud. And just as not, you know, I don't think they provide, I've never seen one that provided as much um, kilowatts in both continuous and, uh, starting. I know Generac makes that big one that they got, but I have not personally seen one of those operate. Um, had read some, read some reviews and they say they, they operate uh, and they'll run a four ton unit also. 
but uh, you can't hardly keep gas in them. They're just they use so much gas that you can't keep enough gas on hand for them. Um, and that's one thing, I don't want to be out here pouring gas in a generator. If my light says I don't want to be out here pouring gas in a generator for four or five hours, man. That's, you know, you're getting up in the middle of the night if you're trying to stay, you know, cool or warm and you want your furnace central to run. Um, you don't want to be getting up every four or five hours to, to pour gas in a generator. That's, that's not cool. So uh, I, I like this setup here that I got. I think the 25 gallons, I think, should, you know, that'll run all night long. Uh, you can check the fuel in it and get some of it the next day if you decide to sleep 12, 13 hours, whatever, uh, before you get back around to checking it. Should be good. And these here have a computer shutdown on them that, like a typical diesel, when it runs out of fuel, you have to reprime it and all that, and it's bad for it. These, when the fuel gets low, the ECM will shut the welder down and, uh, you know, not allow it to run all the way out. So when you put fuel in it, it'll start right back up with uh, no issue whatsoever. So anyway, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. Probably rambled on long enough. Uh, just trying to provide as many specifics as possible on the setup. I know uh, a lot of people is probably looking for good generators and uh, whatnot. And I like this setup here. It's definitely not the cheapest. It's not cheap by any means, but I'd like to have a good welder around anyway. And so that gives me this route. And if I get the other one over there running, I have two of them. And I could actually run my house and everything off of one and then use the other to weld with if I needed to weld during that time uh, for whatever reason. I doubt that'll ever be the case, but who knows. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.